Hey guys, welcome to the next Critique the Community. We are finally back in Puerto Rico and we will update you guys very quickly on the uh, earthquake situation. Um, but if you'd like to be part of the next critique, we are going to be critiquing action photos. Do you have anything you want to say about that? Or you just want to leave it at action. I guess I thought it would be like sports, but maybe action should be broader than that. Okay, so it's just action. You can click on the link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, before we get into this critique, which should be interesting, these are unique photos. You you just picked all these images. Yes. Do you feel like they were good? Did you throw some bad ones in here? There were some great images that seemed kind of cliche, mm -hmm. and then there were other images that were bad. So I tried to, I don't know, I just tried to pick images that I thought were unique to me, images that I hadn't seen a lot, even though there were some great ones that were probably unique to that photographer. So okay. that was kind of a little difficult, but I think we have some, we have 20 good images here. Cool, well, um, just to quickly update you guys, we have not been in Puerto Rico in the last two or three weeks. Since um, the holiday season. <clears throat> yeah. And a lot has happened. Since December 28th, I think there have been over 1,300 earthquakes in Puerto Rico. 1300 and over about 80 maybe have been felt okay how many have been over like a category five a lot okay. a lot yeah if you guys type in like u.s earthquakes or something these websites come up that just have lists every time it just adds and there's a lot of earthquakes going on like alaska is getting hit every couple days and there's there's a lot more earthquakes going on than i would have thought yeah i th i thought i felt an earthquake last night i woke up freaked out a little bit might have just been indigestion it could have been um, but, you know, when I checked the list, it was like, yeah, last night we had five. So, but I don't know if I felt those or not. So, yep. Ponce is the city in Puerto Rico. It's like the south middle of the island, maybe a little closer to the west side, that is getting hit the most. I've actually heard that that's not totally true. Really? What have you heard? It's a city more west than that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But Ponce is like the main city. Yeah, so our guide, Robert, who has taken us to a lot of incredible places in Puerto Rico, has said there's been no damage in Ponce. A what? Yeah. But we've seen pictures he, and footage and... I don't know. He sent me like 20 pictures that we could put up on the screen. And he said most of the damage has been done in a town that I'm not even going to try to pronounce its <laughs> name. But um, he thought there was about 50 houses have been damaged, which isn't, I don't know if that's that more crazy? or less than what the media is saying. But right. those areas have been definitely affected heavily, but it's not probably as bad... Most of the island has not been affected at all. Right, and I have heard from people, again, I don't wanna make fake news fake news, but I've heard that some of the news stations are showing pictures and video of structures that were had already fallen down. Really? And, you know, cause they don't know, they're flying over here from wherever, and then yeah. they're like, oh, this church has collapsed, but it was already collapsed, and so it's a little misleading. Um, from what I have heard, some people, you know, in these towns that are further west than us are um, in a little bit of trouble just in the sense that, like, they don't want to send their kids to school because there's an earthquake every five minutes and right. the buildings just aren't in great shape. But for the most part, I, I don't think it's as horrific as the media would have you believe, especially for the rest of the island. Now, we were without power for a good 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, and I think I've heard that maybe still some places don't have power. I don't know if that's true. I think one of the major uh, power generators here, something was uh, broken, and so it's going to take such a long time to repair this thing that now we're sharing power from other generating facilities that are already not in good shape. Yeah, so. the scary thing is here in Puerto Rico, there's only like three to five facilities, I believe, that are making power for the whole island. So okay. if one goes down, it's it's a much bigger issue than if you were on the mainland where you can kind of get power from multiple sources. So that's always an issue here when you have. Yeah, so I, I don't think like our side of the island has really been affected that much at all, but just to update everybody. Um, I've been told that the kids at school though are being told to bring flashlights and prep stuff to oh, class. Really? Wow. And I think today they are going over, today's kind of like the big first day back. Okay. They're going over procedures of what to do in an earthquake. So if you guys live on the West Coast of the United States, this is probably like very, very common. Yeah. But, you know, we have dealt with very few earthquakes in our lives. So it's kind of crazy Well, I think, I mean, even here. this, when you, when you look at, I think the last earthquake, which was the size of the one that hit a few days ago, was like 19th. 100 years ago or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so even though we do get earthquakes here, we don't get 1,300 earthquakes in a two-week span. You know, it's pretty crazy. It's just happening every few minutes. Yep. 
All right, let's get to this critique. All right, this is the highest rated image, which means this photographer is the winner of a free tutorial in the fstoppers.com slash store. You know what? And I, this is always an issue, like, you know, we're trying to, I'm always like, David will reach out to you, and then we fail to tell David or whatever. So here's what you could do. If you are the winner of this uh, critique, you can message me on fstoppers.com and I will send you the tutorial. Just message me, uh, direct message me, tell me what tutorial you want and of course what you want. And uh, I personally will send you the tutorial. Are you ready to rate this, Patrick? I am. Three, two, one. I'm in between a three and a four. I just don't think I like this subject matter. It's so weird and like... We did ask for unique photos. I know, I know, but I still like to think if this is something that should belong in your portfolio and will get you work. I love a lot of the concept that's going on here. I almost feel like I would like it more if she didn't have these crazy fingers. Yeah. Like, I don't know what's happening in this image, and it just feels like the deviant art style of photography where you're doing this avant-garde type of thing. And it's done really well. The lighting is cool. I don't know about this little flare above her hat that looks like it, I don't know, should maybe be burned in a little bit more. But this isn't an image where I would be like, man, I got to hire this photographer. But yeah, I don't I don't know if that's uh, totally fair. Um, I, I'm going to critique this more from the technical standpoint. There's aspects of this that I love and I think look great. And then there's other aspects that just look a little cheap to me. I think her legs, for whatever reason, the lighting on her legs look great. Um, but then when you start moving up her body, you know, all the wrinkles on the top part of her shirt or whatever, it just starts to look cheaper. And then the lighting on her starts to look cheaper. It looks like there might, you know, you could do a little bit more retouching or something there. I feel like the hat looks really good. But then when you get to the fingers and stuff and the fact that they're all kind of like folding over on each other, it just... It feels a lot cheaper to me. And then, I, I don't know how this photographer has done this with this box going back, but they have some shadows on the box that are kind of making sense. And there's some reflections as well. You can see like the fingers reflecting yep. in the black. I think that looks really nice. Um, so I wanna give it a four, but there's just a few things about it that feel a little bit cheaper to me and that's why I gave it three. What do you think is happening on the top of the black box where there's like white highlights or something? I don't know. I can't figure out how this was. Is that like a glossy, shot. glossy surface and it's re reflecting the white? Or is that like a dodge or something? It's... I like normally I, I don't, don't see even highlights in black like <laughs> that unless it was a glossy surface, but. Hmm. Well, community gives it 3.45. So this is the highest rated one and just 3.45. Yeah. Goodness, that's rough. All right. Next up. Now I picked these images out and I believe this might have been the second or third most highly rated image, not to persuade your opinions on this, but mm -hmm. people did like this photo. All right, you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Four stars, we agree. Um, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of in between a three and a four again. I prefer this to the first shot. Um, I think, I think the lighting on her looks nice. Um, love the smoke inside the chamber. I think that looks really cool. I think I'd like a little bit more detail on this foreground and background somehow. And maybe all I want to see is some sort of shadow being cast towards the camera from this chamber. You know, you can see this light behind her. Yeah. I think it would be cool to kind of have her body as some sort of shadow on the ground there. But instead there's nothing, there's no shadow, and it makes it feel like a cheap composite to me. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You just want to have the light that's in the chamber throwing back a shadow towards the camera. Yeah. I was also thinking, and maybe I'm going too far with this, but like having more chambers or something to where it doesn't just feel like you've taken this one image and dropped it onto the smoky scene. They could be empty chambers. They could be the same girl in a different pose or different people. 
I mean, yeah. I mean, there's a million different things I just, that I, This is going towards, like, fine art, maybe, but it doesn't... It's, like, well executed. But it just leaves me kind of wanting a little bit more. Well, they've used so much dead space on the right and the left, and then this perfect uh, symmetrical composition. It does feel super empty because it is. So I, I'm just messing around with some vertical crops, you know, something like this. Yeah. Uh, it almost starts to feel like people here in this community are into the chirogenic baths, you know, where you, yeah. you get in, I don't know that you would, the bath would look like this and you'd necessarily be naked in it, but it kind of has that vibe for it. And I could see that, that type of company hiring you to do that work. Community 3.43, next up. Definitely have seen this image before, and I know who this photographer is. I don't know if this is, has this been in a critique, or we've just seen this on the community? I'm not sure. Have you seen this image? Oh, uh, certainly. Okay. Yeah, this image is so crazy. If I saw this without the behind-the-scenes image that he has added here, I would have no idea what I was even looking at here. I, I, I would probably think this is just computer art. graphics. Yeah. All right, are you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Four stars, we agree. I mean, I, I considered giving this a five. I mean, it's certainly a five in terms of cigarette photography. Yeah. Um, and certainly this is a unique photograph, but Felix used this crazy wide angle macro lens that's been all over the internet recently. How much is this thing? It's like. Is it ten or twenty thousand dollars for that? Oh, lens? is it? I thought it was relatively affordable. Is it not at all? Maybe I'm wrong. I uh, this, maybe I I'm this, wrong. Uh, I thought everybody had one and they were playing with it. I just assumed it wasn't that okay. expensive. But may, maybe maybe it is twenty grand. I don't know. Maybe it's like twelve hundred dollars. And I just thought it's at that <laughs> point where do I need that lens? But there's no way in hell we need this lens. But I'm sure. I mean, if you can take pictures like this, I, I think I remember him talking about taking this photograph. And he had to do insane focus stacking to get the entire cigarette and the table in focus. Um, but, I mean, I, I've never seen anything like this before. It, it looks so crazy. I love this image, but the hard thing to critique about Felix is that his work is so great. Who am I to say, like, what he should do? Yeah. But I feel like this is so close to being some kind of, like, anti-smoking ad. I would like to see it conceptually going even further hmm. with, like, bodies on the ground or people running or <laughs> something more that tells you more about like what you're trying to say here. This almost looks like a, a landscape shot with this crazy smoke, which is cool. I love it. But I almost feel like you could go one step further to where this image could actually be used for like a cause and then it might have some more. I, you know, I, I don't know if he did this for his own personal work. I know he's been getting hired a lot recently to shoot magazine covers and stuff. So This does look like a magazine cover. I just think, you know, and this was, I don't want to say all done in camera because he obviously had to do a lot to finish this image off. Yeah. But what I'm suggesting would now not be all in camera. You know, I'm kind of right, saying right, right. adding other people and stuff. But this this is, I mean, gosh, I can't believe this didn't win the... I know, I know. Community gives it 3.39. So it was up there, but did not win. Now this is this is so crazy. And did did you read anything about this image? Is this real? I didn't. I should have read more of them. I've seen a few images like this recently where you have the levels of foreground to background, but then the top of each of these levels is super dark, and then you have this haze at the bottom, and I don't know if that's real or not. I mean, I would assume it's not real, but I don't know. I mean, this doesn't even look remotely like a photograph to me. This, this looks like digital art for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly unique. I, I do like it a lot. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Three stars, we agree. I'm between a three and a four. I am too. I mean, I certainly considered giving it a four. My my only thing is the top of the second, third, yep. fourth on the left, and then the top of those buildings is so dark that it just doesn't remotely feel real to me. And I would love for this photographer to say, Lee, you're an idiot. This is super real, and you can take this photograph at blah, 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 blah. But um, Even if it is real, I would love to just pull a gradient down and 
make those high, those highlights and shadow transitions a little softer. Yeah. You have that at the bottom, you know? Yeah, yeah. But that top, that's the one thing my eye does go to. Or even maybe you could, if you burn it in too much, you're going to lose that second layer of buildings. But I think there's some happy medium there. Super cool shot, though. Can I you... love vertical hor uh, landscapes, too. You don't mm, see stuff Yeah, like you that don't see those often. very often. Well, because usually there's not that much in interest from the bottom to top of an image. But, I mean, there's so much going on here. Yeah. It's just crazy. Community gives it 3.21. Got the birds. Seems to be a trend lately in the critiques. Lots of birds. I like the birds. I like the birds. In case you guys can't tell, I have been sick now for like two weeks. I've been sick. I think I got the flu in Charleston. Then we went snowboarding in Colorado and I've just been like dying every day, but we had to go. The trip cost so much freaking money. And uh, then I got back to Puerto Rico, and I thought, like, okay, time to get better. And I still feel sick today. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I think I kind of had, like, altitude sickness. <laughs> and, like, it was so dry, and it was so weak. I mean, going from Charleston all the way to, to Breckenridge, it's like just walking upstairs. I was like, man, I'm so winded. And then now I have, like, a cold, but yeah, fingers crossed I don't get as sick as you've been. I know. It seems like recently every time I go back to the States, I get sick. And then it's like I'm totally fine in puerto rico it's never cold here everybody's yeah. well i'm not in like confined areas with tons of people like i am in the states you know and a lot of it could just be the airplane yeah you get sick flying anywhere because you get sick a lot even when you're you were living in the states i know i'm a sick person all right. all right you ready three two one i went four you went three i really like this too i could i can see an argument for four i am wondering if I like the bottom bird. Because it's out of focus or it's in motion? Yeah, it's just out of focus. And I feel like the bird shadow is awesome. I love it. But my eye keeps going to this blurry bird. And if the shadow wasn't there, fine, keep the blurry bird. But the fact that the shadow is there, I'm just curious if this photographer added that bird or this is real. If they added the bird, I say remove it. If it's real, then keep it because, you know, you got super lucky and you got both of those birds um, in the shot. But Well, it seems like, yeah, you're just questioning whether or not both should be in the frame. Because the shadow is not the shadow of the bird we see. Correct. It's like a bird higher up out of the frame. Yeah. Now, the other thing that I've just noticed is I don't think the vertical lines are straight. I mean, if you look on the left side along yeah. this... Uh, um, like catwalk ladder. or ladder thing. Yeah, just tilt this a little bit and fix that. What a crazy location. Like, where in the world is this? Where you, It's like a video game. Like, you go I out know. one door just to go down some stairs and go into another door. I wonder if it's fake. I wonder if there's been some funny business going on here. Well, there is when I look at it. Look in the middle of the staircase and go up. Doesn't it look like there's a lot of texture that's kind of lost, almost like there's been cloning or something? Yeah, I was looking at that. But Maybe that's just the way the outside of the building is. I mean, I now see it really yeah, on the it's, bottom, it's too. Everywhere. Yeah. But I don't know. I think it's a cool graphic art imagery, like piece of imagery. Community only gives it 2.82. They didn't like it that much. They hate birds. That's they hate true. birds <laughs> until your mom critiques birds, and then suddenly they like the birds. Exactly. You know, uh, when Katie was on the critique against her will, um, she never watched it. Yeah. Because she was afraid she would look dumb, but mostly she was afraid that everybody on YouTube was going to be so mean to her. Because yeah. you know how they are to me. Yeah. And um, so she never watched it, but then I, I, I don't know that I watched it, but I just read through some of the comments. And of course, my mom watched it and read all the comments. And she was like, Katie, everyone was nice to you. And she's like, what? I can't believe it. So they were so two, nice. I know, I know we each hate each other, but thank you for being nice to my wife. I appreciate it. They were that. so nice that they actually suggested getting rid of one of us. They and always having... suggest <laughs> getting rid of me and putting someone else in. That's the relationship I have with YouTube. You seemed very divided on this image. I'm a little divided. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. All right. You went four, I went three. I want to give this a four. I mean, obviously, a lot of work's been put into setting this up. The reason why I gave it a three 
I don't like how symmetrical it is. Symmetrical or slightly not symmetrical? I just feel like they tried to make it perfect and symmetrical, and it's not. You know, it looks like a human did this, which is great. But because of that, it just feels a little sloppy to me. It's like in no man's land. It's like not one way or the other. Yeah, and when you when you just look at like the drips of spice and salt and pepper that are around, it just looks kind of sloppy. So you have this uh, perfection of, you know, all these little wood pieces everywhere, but then you just kind of have this slop of all this other stuff. And it just... I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like if you were to just crop in a little bit and do some sort of off-center crop, I might like it a little bit more. I also wonder if the light is a little too hard and maybe a little too high above it. I, I don't know if I'd like to see the light a little bit softer and bring that light down closer to the table, cast some more shadows down. Uh, right now, the shadows are pretty pretty short but it just doesn't feel as professional as some top-down food shots I've seen. I see what you're saying, but I don't know that I agree with a lot of that. I love the lighting on this. I feel like it's hard enough to where you have some nice shadows on some of the powders, and I don't mind the short little shadows and the sharpness of them. I think that everything's lit pretty evenly. Maybe if you brought the light down lower, like one side would suffer over the other. Um, I guess looking at it now, I kind of feel like, you know, I don't like how there's some of the red chili all over the place where it might feel like the red chili should only be near the red chili and then you should have more yellow powder, yellow curry or whatever that is. And maybe it should be messy in a more reasonable and logistical way. Yeah. But I still think this image has a lot of value. I think you need an image like this on your website if you shoot food. Sure. And this is super trendy, and this could be used for so many applications. Yes, maybe there's some other crops you could get, but I feel like cropping is like the lowest level of critique because that can always be fixed without having to retake the image, you know? And your client can crop it however you want. Yeah. I think it's a great image. I, I stand by this as being a good four. Community disagrees. 2.86. I mean, we knew that was coming. <laughs> Now we've seen this before, right? I don't know if we've seen this image, but we've we seen saw another one like it. This guy's work. Maybe it was the same image, but this does feel different. But I know I've seen some tower with stars. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Three stars. We agree. Not exactly sure what you do with this, but I do like the graphic nature of it, and it is very different. Feels like the 1990s to me. Yeah. It feels like, uh, you know, this this would be like a new high-end fancy textbook. Not a crappy textbook, but like a high-end tech. I'm, I don't know. It just, it, it's got this flat lighting effect that you see in a bunch of 90s photographs, but then, you know, you still got the stars behind it. Uh, I like it. Nothing more to say. I don't know that I have anything more to say Community to you. Community gives it a 2.97. Not really. I just, it almost starts to look like an illustration or something, which is kind of cool. Yeah. All right, next up, we got that Atlanta Aquarium photography going on here. Yeah. This is the joke that we always have is like, we see these amazing pictures of fish, but then we just go, was that just taken in an aquarium that cost 10 bucks to get into? And should it matter? Should it matter if you take an amazing photograph? I mean, if you were going to take this image, what would you do? You'd have to probably catch the fish and put it in your own aquarium and then light it with some kind of... <laughs> I mean, I would imagine this has to be shot in captivity if the lighting looks too perfect. Um, but I would love to be wrong. I just went to the Atlanta Aquarium. Katie had never been before. Really? And I was hoping for Christmas I wanted to get her scuba diving passes. You can actually dive in the Atlanta Aquarium with the whale sharks. It's one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Uh, if, if you're ever in Atlanta, go to this aquarium. Yeah, I think it's the only place in the world that has them in captivity and you can pay to dive. In there. I think when I went recently too, they were just swimming on the surface. So is it hard to get the diving pass or is it booked up? Or it was is only... just sold out. They had one seat left and we wanted to do it together. Uh... So. Yeah. So, you know, if you book it a month out, you'll be fine. I tried to do it a week before. All 
Are you ready? I am ready. Three, two, one. Three, four. I should probably throw a four on this. Uh, yeah, I This mean, doesn't look like your typical aquarium photography. It looks to me like it is kind of uplit, but I can't quite figure out which direction the lighting is coming from. It's very strange feeling. It, it almost feels like this fish is glowing and it's producing its own light more than it's being lit. Um, I mean, it seems to me, having been to the aquarium recently, that this is lit with some kind of black light or something. And maybe this is one of those bioluminescent fish. But then the fin, and especially the top of his head, might be hit with like the, the normal incandescent lighting that's like around the tank, the walkway. <laughs> okay. Or it's like You're another building specific. that's like the cafeteria in the back, you know? But, but then there's almost no catch light in the fish's huge eye, which is so weird. It looks like maybe there's some reflection on the bottom of its eyelid showing that it's being lit from below. I guess they could have cleaned up some of that. You know, if you had mm. glass and you were like, this shot looks so good, except I can see someone's flash or I can see a human and you're like, let me just make their eye black. Photographer, let us know how you shot this. Either uh, way, it's, it's cool. really cool. And if you could do that with a bunch of fish, maybe only this type of fish could ever be captured in this way. But I don't know that, that to me looks like something that would be publishable. Community gives it 3.01. Ooh, now what is this? What is that? So this is one of them where I read the description. You know how the iPad and the iPhone, when you shake them, it does this like undo? Does yours no, do that? No, I've never. See, like mine, mine will be like undo stuff. Oh. Uh, I don't know anyone in the history of the world that has ever needed to undo something typing who is shaking their phone to undo it. Um, you know me, I, I don't know half the gestures, and no. then the ones that I do know, I hate, and I'm like, why would it be like this? But yours doesn't do the Mine shake. Mine doesn't do that, no. I wonder if you have it cut off. All right. Um, are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. I went four, you went three. Um, I don't know if this should be a four, but I really like this. I don't know what the hell I'm looking at, but there's little details in this that kind of let you know that this is real, whatever yeah. you're looking at. You know, this isn't just some uh, simple lines created in Photoshop. There's detail in this glass. You can especially see it in the colored um, pyramid. Yeah. Uh, so you can kind of see through it. I don't know, I really like it. I could see this being wallpaper or something for a phone or a computer. Would you, in post, connect some of the white lines to get rid of Maybe. those Maybe. I mean, the, this pyramid on the right, yeah, it's like the white doesn't touch at the top. It's a little weird. And it's also got this jaggedy line that... Yeah, it does. When you say there's details that make it feel real, there's also the white lines that make it feel fake. It's almost like when you draw a line and paint, you yeah. know, and it gives you that jaggedy. I almost would like to, to just put another line there to smoothen that out. Apparently these are real pyramids and just based on the time of day and the reflections, the photographer was like able to crop in really tight and not show. real pyramids. Like this is a real pyramid structure somewhere. I don't like, know where this like is. Like human size? This is a big building? I mean, I, yeah, I don't know how big this is. If this is like the pyramid in Vegas or like a pyramid that's like 10 feet tall. See, I assume this, these were like little hold in your hand type. Things. I don't think it's that small, but I don't huh. I don't know. I'd like to know more about it too. Let us know, photographer. Community completely disagrees with me. 2.63. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Three stars. I don't like the girl. I like the red, and I like that there's a person in here, but I think her like body position and the vibe she's giving off is, isn't 100% working here, but I do think it could look cool with a person in it. I completely agree. So Mike Kelly, world-renowned architectural photographer, he shoots spaces like this with people all the time. He 100% of the time blurs them. Really? I'm almost positive. I Even just like a slight little blur? Yeah, a little blur, a little blur. Um, this woman, her face looks angry her arm looks hyper extended. It looks like it's broken and going backwards. And then her stride is so wide. I mean, it looks like she is pissed and she's about to go 
quit her job or something. And that's all I can think about instead of what this photograph should be about, which is all, you know, all these incredible structures and the color and the, you know, monotone and everything. Do you think you could go into Photoshop and add a motion blur with this exact image and salvage that? Or Probably. do you think you're still going to see the stride and like you can't? Yeah, her stride's a little wide, but yeah, I think you could. I think you could probably add just a little blur and uh, make it less about her. But I like the fact that it's this monotone image with this red person, but I don't think the photographer's goal was to have it be all about this girl, but that's all I see. Would you go in with a lasso tool and start cleaning up, especially that top bar where you see some of the mildew or something? Yeah, maybe and like so. Make some of the whites more perfect because this image is going in that vein. There's also some like a, some of the squares on the left side that are off a little bit. Would you, do you think it could benefit this image or do you go straight to the girl so much that that's the... I mean, my, I feel like the girl is the biggest issue for me. My question to you, that pole in the bottom left, mm -hmm. uh, the black thing, That's kind of do you leave that? Is it part of the architecture? I'm not sure, but my eye goes to that a lot too, and it feels like some parking thing that's it kind of It works that it's black shot. and white and it's yeah. super contrasty, but it's also not ideal, but what can you do when that's there? All right, community gives it 2.54. So this is the lowest rated image so far, maybe? Really? I don't know. It's not my least favorite. Well, we're getting to it. Here we go. Ready. I am ready. Three, two, one. I still have I'm not really? gonna rate this a two. Really? No, I don't mind this. I mean it's got like really? a really is there a time in this? It's like this is like early two thousands photography or something, but <laughs> my biggest critique for this, and maybe this is what the photographer is going for, I don't know. I just feel like it would be so much better with a child. Yeah. Like the fact that this person is like mid-age, like 20 or something is a little weird. I completely But I agree. love the set building. I like that it's not hyper real, like there's not detail everywhere. I feel like this is kind of a cool editorial type of image that could be used. There's a lot of really famous photographers who have work like this. Yes, like this, I but just, not like this. What would you do different? Would you have a younger child <clears throat> pose them closer to the camera, looking at you like they landed? Or right. Do you like the person sitting up against the rocket? Like Maybe. This? First thing, like you said, it's so weird to have this. You'd, you'd think like five, six years old, yeah. and then this person that looks really old. So that, I don't get it all. Why is she dressed like a dinosaur? I don't get it. Um, my other issue is like the background, you know? I. What's up with the tree and the wall and the fence and everything? I, I feel like there's so much potential here with the space. Um, you, you could have probably just moved it anywhere other than this spot or just moved the camera a little bit, gotten the camera lower, shot upwards. Oh, hold on, hold on. I see what you're saying with like on one side there's trees and on the other side there's a line, but yeah. do you like one or the other? If you just cloned in some trees on the right side or you made this abstract right side on the left side, would you be happy? It just feels like a cheapo parking lot to me. It doesn't feel like this was thought out. So if know. there's trees, then I want it to be all trees. I don't want to see I like a house that. and a fence under the trees. And on the right side, it looks like we're in a Walmart parking lot. I don't want to see that. I want it, I want it to look like, uh, you know, this kid is like out in the woods and he's built this rocket ship. Um, sky, I like it. I feel like your white balance might be a little off. It's like nuclear blue. Seems like there could be some uh, warmth added to that and still have a nice blue tone. Um, but yeah, and then I'm trying to- I love the colors and the tones in the foreground though. Like I, I don't know why the person's dressed like a dinosaur, but if it was a five-year-old kid, I'd probably overlook that and just think like it's playtime and it's imagination and it doesn't really matter. Do you want the person I think, dressed I think, as like an astronaut? I mean, that would be better. My other issue, I think, is the crop as well. There's so much uh, dead space on the bottom of the frame that it becomes very much about like this parking lot vibe when I, I just feel that, um, you know, if you cropped past the ground a little bit, made it more about the person, the kid, and the spaceship, I think that would be a little better, but. I don't know. Community gives it 2.45. I still think it's a three. Yes, well, yes. you're wrong. All right. This is wild looking. 
So I picked this image because it's not your typical view of an ice cave. Certainly not. I mean, what's going on here? You think there's a hole in the top of the ice cave where snow is falling down, making a little snow mountain? I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that that is interesting. And then how is she being lit? It almost feels like a flash pop. Yeah. But the flash pop seems like it would have to be so high up to get that angle of light. I don't. I don't quite know how they shot this. All right, you ready? I am. Three, two, one. Three stars, we agree. Solid three. I appreciate how different this is, but I think my biggest critique and what made me consider giving this a two was the lighting and the pose on this girl. I almost want a hands on the hips or crossed arms, strength, looking at the camera pose, this, it just doesn't feel planned out. It doesn't really make sense to me. As you would say, I don't get the story here. You're coming over to my side. No, 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 I'm not. You're starting to see the light. No, it just, it just doesn't really make sense. Like, what is she looking at? Why is she happy? Why are her hands out like a cute little pose? I just, I don't get it. Yeah, it's almost like an editorial pose where like she should be in a snowball fight with kids or something. Yes. Like it doesn't yes. make sense with the epicness of like accomplishment or you're in this cave. I don't know what the pose should be though. I mean, you would take this picture and hopefully if this isn't your wife, you would persuade her to do like 20 different things mm -hmm. and then you'd have something to pull from. Yeah. But it's not the worst of things. I mean, I still think it's a solid three image. I don't know that I could push this to a two. There's something with the crop that's so symmetrical that I keep wondering if I like it or don't like it. Mm. I don't know if I want to see more of the hill so it feels like more of the snow so it feels like she's higher than she is. Maybe she's not very high. And the ground's right there and this is what you had to do. But All right, well, community gives it 2.59. Remember the uh, the Time Magazine photograph of George Bush Sr.? That's exactly what I was thinking of. That uh, Greg Heisler took. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a crazy story. Yeah, you should look that one up. Does he, he tell that of... story on YouTube? I don't know if he does, but the basic story was just that like he had to take a picture of George Bush Sr. and so he did like a double exposure. Double exposure and like in one shot. Just in like one this. shot, super technical. It looked very similar to this, but like. He got criticized because it made him look like he was evil on one side. And he was then, a like, two-faced. He was like two-faced president. Yeah, so he was banned from the White House after that for years uh, because they thought that he had like tricked the president into this awful photograph. <laughs> Meanwhile, he was just trying to take like a cool technical <laughs> yeah, photo. Yeah, probably. All right, you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. I'm going to give this a three, but I think it's a two as is. I think just... My critique is I don't love the different colors here. I think mm -hmm. if this was all black and white, it would be stronger. But this, if you had to take a picture of like life and death, or you were given a theme, you know, like passing on or something, to me, this is like a pretty cool way to do it. Maybe I'm reading in too much of it. I, I view the girl as like struggling and in pain on the left, and then somehow, like, she's now meeting her maker. She's, like, transcended life or something. That's the story that's being presented to me. All right, so this woman is dead in your mind. Um, yeah, like, <sighs> she's dead in the left or dying in the left, and in the right, she's, like, resurrected. Okay. Or some, some story like that. And I think it's kind of cool the way they did it. I don't love the purple tones and then the super strong yellow. That's the part that I'm not really loving. Yes. But other than that, I think this is a pretty awesome image. I disagree. I do not think it is an awesome image. Um, my least favorite part of this is the yellow tone on the right face. I feel like that looks awful. And I don't mind two tones, but why neon yellow? Why wouldn't it just be like normal, normal color? You know, and then there's, like you said, weird magenta purple tone in the middle, but there's strange banding and stuff going on, uh, which looks kind of cheap to me. Um, I don't think the lighting on either face looks particularly flattering for this person. I don't think merging the two faces with this blur in the middle looks good. 
I don't think the fact that you can't really see the top of the head and the hair, I think that makes it look kind of cheap to me. Um, and so, I don't know, this, this does not feel like a working professional photographer's image, in my opinion. I don't know if I totally agree with everything you're saying. I mean, you say the lighting's not flattering for the subject. I mean, I mean it's super hard, flat lighting. I think I think just a simple softbox would look nice. But uh, I just, I don't think this looks that good. It's almost like it's lit with a flashlight. Greg Heisler has images like this. You know, like images are lit with really hard light, kind of from the far side. And it, it just brings out all the detail in the face, you know. I don't think that bothers me. I like it. I would love to see if I could, you know, desaturate this whole thing or, you know, give it just a slight hint of a color if I would like it better. Well, community slightly agrees with you more. 2.68. Next up. Now, look at that. Does that look cute to you or delicious? Or Definitely neither? cute. It's, I mean, squid is such a weird thing to eat. Yeah, I was having dinner the other night and I was eating an eel sushi roll. And I was like, how much I, I was saying how much I love this roll, but how it's still so weird to eat squid or to eel. eat eel, eel. Yeah. And there's this new Night Shyamalan, is that how you say his name? M. Night Shyamalan. Show on Google Plus or on uh, Apple Plus. And in one of the episodes, they kill eel and i don't know if this is how you normally do it but they like staple its head down and like pull its skin off it is so horrific and i'm like i don't know if they just did that so that it would be like in this gloomy horror type of show or if that's really how they prepare eel but katie had a pet eel so the idea that you would eat it is pretty horrific to her especially squid though is that same sort of animal where like it freaks me out but every time i have fried calamari i'm like this is pretty good but I don't like eating the full ones, the ones with the tentacle, you know, and you yeah, see the whole thing. Yeah, like it I, looks like this right on the plate. I'm glad I'm a vegetarian now. All right. Um, is this your aquarium shot? I mean, this has to be shot in an aquarium, but I mean, I've never seen one like this with its things up in, in the air. That's wild. I mean, it's pretty interesting. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Four, just because of the way it looks, I think it's like so unique. Yeah, the reason why I did three instead of four, I just feel like the lighting looks pretty generic. I'd love to see more directional lighting to really show some beautiful gradients on this animal, but at this point, it just kind of feels like it's being lit by fluorescent lights. What if there was like a hard light that's directional, but straight above camera to where it's like casting, it's super bright it and casting. It might be interesting, I don't know, I, I need to see it. I mean, I love being able to see the detail, so I don't want to lose that. So I tried to understand, like I read the description of this and I could not understand what they were saying, but apparently this is not a real squid. This is like maybe blown glass or something. I wasn't <laughs> quite sure. I mean, that's incredible glass blowing, but it makes sense because I've never, yeah, I don't know if I've they... never seen a squid with tentacles up in the air so perfect like that. Um, you would think that those tentacles would be floating down below. So it's still uh, cool, but I guess if it's like a composite of another piece of art, you know, like it's a photo of a glass. Right. It's thing. like where's the talent in the person who created the squid or the person who takes the snapshot of it? Well, now you have no excuse. I would like to see better lighting on this, if it's not even real. Community gives it two point seven six, and you gave it four stars. I mean, I do like that image as Are a standalone. Are you out of your mind? I mean, yeah, maybe because I knew it wasn't a real squid. That's pretty wild. Is this real? I believe so. I don't know exactly where this is. The um, fireman's outfit doesn't look like super high quality. Like you? he's prepared? Well, you know when you see photographers do the spaceman photos and like nobody has a real good space suit, so yeah. they have these shitty space suits that look like... Like they won't live long in the atmosphere. Right. This It kind of feels like that with this guy. 
it doesn't seem thick enough for something. And then what's going on with the neck and the helmet? It looks like it's sitting on the top of his head and not all the way down. I don't know. Um, maybe this is real, but it, it something about his outfit feels If strange. he's not prepared, he's definitely giving that vibe in the photo. It's like an overwhelming dread. That, yeah. Like, there's no hope in this image. Yeah. But that's something I like about this image. It completes the, the um, story. Oh. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the composition here because, I mean, I think we can all Should agree. Should we rate it first? We haven't okay, rated sure. it. sure. Three, two, one. Three stars, we agree. So the most interesting part of this is that we've got this insane fire and these, this beautiful smoke. I mean, goodness, something about this doesn't seem real. It seems fake. But anyway, let's just say that that's real. Wouldn't the correct and better way to frame the shot be to lower the camera, show less of the foreground, like who cares about the road and the grass, stop cutting off his his calves yeah. get his entire body the bottom of the frame is the fire and then all that smoke just filling up the entire shot like why why frame this person in the road it's like he's not even in front he, he would stand out so much more if there was smoke behind him i think you're absolutely right i think though this is the second best composition if you don't do the one you're suggesting this is like the leading lines going straight to his head and leading into the frame i think the photographer just chose like the second or third best option and maybe overlooked the best option that just seems unbelievable to me it makes me feel like this whole thing is fake because of the composition choice i don't know that this is fake i mean there's so many fires around the world i mean wasn't there just one huge one and like but Okay. The United States where people did like wedding pictures in front of it and then Australia's like on fire at the moment. Like here's it's another, a pretty common occurrence. <laughs> here's another reason why I think it's fake. Why isn't the the flames why aren't the flames blown out? They have this deep orangey yellow tone. Shouldn't they just be pure white? I guess it just depends on what's burning, you know. If it was like a house or something and it's an intense flame, sure, maybe. But if it's just burning like the ground, all right. it's just, well, I don't know. I, I, I wish I had must read know out of all the pictures. Now, this is the one that I am most interested in. Photographer, please let us know on the original post on F stoppers. Um, what the heck is going on here? Because this just looks too unbelievable to be real. But I'm very curious. Community gives it 2.8 stars. What the heck is this? So Mike... <laughs> it looks like a human body. Mike James is the winner of a free tutorial. Okay. Do you know what this is we're looking at? I do only because I was so interested that I read the description. All right. Tell me what it is. Uh, I'll tell you after we read it. Well, now I feel like I need to guess what it is. What do you think? Like, what did you first think it was? Well, obviously, the first thing I think is, you know, oh, it's a... Uh, sand or something but then you start looking at it and like i've never seen these shapes now oh, see that's not what i sand thought maybe because it was small when i first saw this i started seeing like pelvic bones and like yeah, yeah yeah it's like a lot of the back lighting that you do on like the human body yeah but then as i looked at it i was like no <laughs> that better not be what this yeah, is please no i don't know what the heck it is all right let's rate it three two one three, three stars or four just it seems too simple to be a four, but I really did like this image. I, I mean, I, I, I like it. Am I going to be grossed out with what it is? What is it? No, it's, it's actually, uh, it's like snow. It's like hills of snow that have really strange shapes. I wonder how big these hills are. Did you notice on the ski slope when we came down by the... Uh, the like bunny hill there was this huge structure yeah and on one side it almost looked like this but 90 percent of it was this perfect untouched it almost looked like a like a beautiful structure that someone had designed but it was super smooth like you know when you're in dubai the, the, and they have those train stations yeah, yeah and they have that like capsule the parabolic arch. yeah it looked like that this is kind of the opposite of that and you're right i don't know if this is very small or very large it has to be very small because having hills like this in a large 
size. And just the, the amount of detail that you can see. I don't know. I mean, it's super interesting. I, but it I looks can't like remember flesh, doesn't it? When you look down here in the yeah. middle, it's like it has the texture of skin. Absolutely. Hmm. Community gives this one 2.82. Uh, Mike, send me a private message on fstoppers.com. Let me know what you want and what tutorial you want, and I will send it to you. What the heck? Three, two, one. Three stars, we agree. <clears throat> There's aspects of this that I love. I mean, the, the white part on the top left looks amazing. But then a lot of it becomes so jumbled that it doesn't look as beautiful and elegant as other parts, it's like I, I I want this to be simpler than it is. I agree. I don't know how you do that until I mean I don't you just understand use the this less type paint, right? Maybe, but if you look straight into the middle of this, you start to see these black holes. Yeah, and that looks bad. And I don't know if more or less paint would make that worse or better. You also have all these super thin strands that sometimes look cool, but the whole middle of this image is made up of all of these discombobulated lines and stuff and it's like I don't know I think this is I think this is just the sort of thing where you have to just do this over and over again and I believe I think I read about this one this is like a balloon that they popped I, I don't was... understand where the balloon is though cuz shouldn't you see part of the latex I was wondering if there was or green is... paint in a white balloon I mean, that when I first sense. saw it, but does but the, it make sense? There's so much thin area that just it almost doesn't... feels like it's a balloon that's been filled with green paint, and then that balloon has been dipped in white paint and popped. But then, where is the shell? Because it's like both paints uh, are exploding. That would make sense. Maybe the shell is somehow like under the white paint somewhere. But... It's cool, but it almost feels like this would be used as a background plate for something else, or you need to composite four or five of these to get the perfect flow on each one of them. It's still neat though. I don't know much about this type of photography. I've never done like explosion. What, what would you call this? It's, it's kind of like splash photography. Yeah, right? paint splash photography. Community 3.03. .03. Now this does not look real to me. Is this real? Is any aspect of this real? The photographer said this was real, but people were debating if that was true. And he said, I just used Lightroom like everyone else does to help pull out all the detail, but that. The reason why it doesn't feel real is because obviously there's no sunlight coming from in front of the camera. We can see clouds everywhere, but then it appears like the, the what is this? Uh, wheat is being lit towards us because the the dark part of the wheat is facing us. So you would think if the sun is able to light up that wheat that much, then the sun would be present in this photograph. And that's what doesn't make any sense. That. It just seems like the sun is up high and in front of the camera. The sun is up high in front, in front of the cam. If the sun is in front of the camera, then you'd be able to see sunlight on these dark clouds. I'm saying the sun is, it's where the light is on me. And so the band at the top is so dark that it's blocking all sunlight. It's backlighting the tornado, which it is kind of back into the side. It's backlighting all of the wheat, but it's not so backlit that it's like a highlight. Nothing seems like light is coming from behind the camera. It feels like, I mean, I just know like with clouds, especially if you could darken in the top part of the clouds and post, I don't feel like the light is in a weird position. This feels, way faker than the movie Twister. <laughs> I would love to see the original image before the dodging and burning because... If the wheat, if the highlight on the top of the wheat or the foreground, whatever that is, was darker and not so bright, would you then feel like... I would, that would feel more realistic, but then also I want the, the road to be darker. It just, none of this makes sense to me from a lighting standpoint. But I, I mean, if the, I don't think the photographer's lying. I think they did just do Lightroom ad adjustments, but it seems like they did heavy, heavy Lightroom adjustments. I don't get it. All right. I'd also be Can curious we even rate know, this? We haven't, but I'd also be curious to know what the original colors look like because... You've got like teals and magentas and Yeah, there's oranges. these warm tones on the right, which I, 
have obviously taken pictures where it's overcast and that's what it looks like but to get that coloring a lot has been done ready <laughs> i don't even know where to begin i'll go three i'm in between a two and a three just because this feels so fake to me it feels like a like a painting um there's something about the water spout or tornado or whatever that is that it almost feels too translucent yes maybe it would be if it's just barely there but i mean this doesn't look like release the raw file we all want to see the raw file all right community gives this one 2.91 <laughs> what the heck Are you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Uh, three stars, we agree. I I mean, obviously, I just feel like this is wacky manipulation, but I give it three stars. I feel like it's, you know, pop art. It's working for me. Yeah, I'm tr I was trying to figure out. So obviously, they made the sky purple, but the rest of it the way that the line on the bottom has a gradient to it is this shot in a way that like which, which part of this is real do you think the line on the far left has been drawn in or could <laughs> you be on an overpass looking up and somehow that's what i thought it was and the overpass was making the shadow but then if you zoom in really close to that corner you can see the line is off a little <coughs> bit but i don't know why that line would be off I, I thought know. it was pretty cool. Like, it's just something different, you know? I don't think this is going to... I mean, I say this isn't going to win you any awards, but this is the type of stuff that could win awards. This is the type of picture that would sell for $100 million, and you're like, what? But, uh, interesting. Community gives it 2.85. This is our final image of the critique. And when I first saw this image, I thought, man, they've manipulated everything. But as you look at it, Shadows look like they actually would make sense, right? Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Three, four. I can I go went either three. Way. Um I I like this. This to me feels like a professional photographer's work on the personal projects part of their website. Sure. You know? You're not really making any money doing this sort of thing, but like this is what you do in your free time when you're not getting hired um, for commercial work. It's cool. I've obviously, I'm sure you've seen photos like this before. Maybe I'd like to see the people doing something a little bit more interesting or interacting with each other, but I think it works. I like the fact that the lady's holding the bags. Yeah. It makes it a little more interesting. And the shadows are so long. I think that's the only way this works. Yeah. If this was earlier in the day and the shadows were closer to their body, it would not be that interesting. And then the ground, I mean, it almost looks like they pasted a like a texture on top. Like that ground is pretty crazy looking. Yeah. I did read about this one. So this one was shot with a 70 to 200 from a high vantage point and not from a drone. A lot of people love that element of it. I don't hmm. know that it really matters how it was shot, but pretty cool. I wonder what he would be standing on to not have the shadow of what he's standing on in the frame. Because he's pretty overhead too, which is... Yeah. Like he's right over them. Maybe he's off to the right just a little bit. But I like it. Cool use of forced perspective. Yeah, really interesting. Community gives it... 2.85, that wraps up this critique. If you'd what like you... to be a part of the next one. What are we doing again? We are doing action. Action photography. You can click on the link. What were you going to ask? I was just going to ask, what did you think of this overall critique? Like, <sighs> unique photos. What, what was the title of this one officially? I think it was just unique photographs, yeah. Images images that, you know, weren't cliche. There was definitely some cliche images. You know, people holding mirrors up and it's, ref you know, all these, like, trendy things. Yeah. I guess you could read that as unique for that photographer. Like, if you've never done a picture of holding a mirror up. Yeah. You know, um, there was also a lot of the... Uh, what what is the uh, the phrase that Mike uses for like the un, like the intentional sorrow? <laughs> yeah, like people with spears and like sorrow. people depressed and stuff. Yeah, like, all right. But I liked I liked this. This was 
fun. I mean, I had a, I had a really good time going through these images. What about the other ones, the other submissions, where there are a lot of really bad ones? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's a lot the of majority images, of them. Yeah, that I felt like, and but some of them rated high highly. Like I really dug down to find some images that I like. Okay. But. Cool. Well, thank you guys, and uh, we will see you in the next critique. And remember to head over to fstoppers.com/store to figure out which tutorial you want to win in the next critique.